Good morning. My mic working? No. Test, test. Maybe it's not on. I always get confused. Test, test. There we are. There we are. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome back. It's great to be here. Great to see you all face to face and not virtual and all that. A um, few announcements. Uh, it's been quite a week here at Holy Trinity. Uh, part of our roof started to blow off, so thankfully that's been repaired. Uh, we had some flooding. Uh, part of that uh, part of that leak means we can't ring the bell. We just discovered it's frozen. Um, so, yes, a wonderful week for, for the wardens and I. Um, let's see, what else? Um, Vestry is coming up, so if you have to submit a vestry report, please do so soon. Uh, our vestry is going to be a, a virtual one. At this point, it would be uh, March 9th at 7 p.m. So keep, keep a, an eye on your email, and if you don't have email, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll give you a call. Um, Bob, any other announcements? We're good? Okay. Pat. Well, when we planned it, and we, we can, uh, I think the wardens and I might further discuss that, uh, when we set the date, we could not gather together uh, as, as a group uh, with, with all the restrictions in place. So um, we might be able actually to do a hybrid for those who aren't comfortable coming, and we could do, do it both at the same time. So I will uh, talk to the warden, because obviously things have changed in terms of our ability to gather together. I know, I know, I know, and I don't want to ruin that. Okay, thank you, thank you for mentioning that. Any, any other announcements? Oh yes, you're allowed to sing. You have to have your mask on, but you can sing. Thank you, Scott. That, 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 that's the biggest news of all, I think. We can sing. Well, let's uh, take a moment of holy silence as we prepare ourselves for worship. Please stand. Our opening song is The Church of Christ in Every Age. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God. 
love the Father. Amen. Let us pray together at the collect of the day. Almighty God, your Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving love. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. <clears throat> Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brother could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me to a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father, and say to him, Thus says our son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and shall, bear, be, shall be near me, you and your children, and your sister's children, and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household, and all that you have, will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Hear what the saying is. The Spirit is saying to the church. Thank you, God. We'll read Psalm 57, uh, responsibly, <clears throat> first by verse. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord who shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in the Holy One who will, will bring it to pass. God will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just feeling as the noon day. Be still therefore the Lord and wait patiently for God. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers to one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself, it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land, they will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord, who is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord will help them and rescue them, rescuing them from the wicked and delivering them, because they seek refuge in God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
please stand. Our gradual hymn is Ubi Caritas. strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Through the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts, be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Uh, maybe a quick little question for you all. What makes someone your enemy? What would you, how would you define someone or something as an enemy? Someone whose views are opposed to yours? Okay. Mm -hmm. Someone who's hurting you? Someone who's hurting you? Yeah. yeah. Or someone who plans to hurt you? Someone who's planning to hurt you? Yeah. Yeah. Conspiracy, as they say in the law. Yeah. yeah. So there, there can be diff different variations on, on the answers to that question. I'm going to get back to it in a moment. It, it, the, the obvious reason I'm asking it is uh, in light of Jesus' command uh, to love your enemies, to pray for those who hurt you. I'm just going to start off, though, just looking on the week gone by. Uh, very much in the news, we've seen a, a continuation of the drama in Ottawa and across.
across the country. This weekend, I'm going to say hopefully, probably most people have joined me in that, uh, hopefully we'll see a bringing to the end of the occupation, uh, particularly in Ottawa. One would think that our little village of Merrickville would be pretty exempt from what we've seen going on. But we're not. We're actually not. As many of you know, this past week, Stella Luna, uh, through my favorite local cafe, uh, was outed for donating money to the uh, Freedom Convoy. Uh, and I'm not going to get into whether that's right or wrong. Um, but certainly the response from some was wrong. Uh, response of threats of violence, threats of causing damage, uh, such that uh, the restaurants were kept closed much of the week. It is a response on par with the behavior of the protesters, no better than theirs. We're now left with the aftermath and the need for healing across the country in Ottawa and certainly here in Merrickville because it is a personal situation for many of us. Tammy and Alessandro have made this their home and set up a business here in our community. And so the question is, how are we to respond? What will our relationship with Tammy be in the wake of all this? What will our relationship be with others in the community, whether they are supporters of the convoy or opponents? But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. I've really struggled with this over the, over the past week. But one of the things that's, that I struggled with is that all too often humans need to find an enemy, a person, a group, a race, a nation, a gender, something to strike out against. Christianity is infamous for it. We have had 2,000 years of hatred and violence towards the Jewish people, towards women, towards gays and lesbians, and certainly anyone who does not fit our view of what a proper Christian is. And so humans hate and they fight and they kill seems to be our way. And into the mix comes Jesus. Love your enemies. Who is my enemy? This would seem to be the first question to ask ourselves. Who is my enemy? But is it the first question to ask? I don't think it is. I'm reminded of Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan. We all know it well. The story of the man who is lying in the ditch half dead. A priest walks by, stays away. Someone else walks by. And then a Samaritan, the enemy of the Jewish people, comes along. And he looks after this man. And the story arises from someone asking Jesus, What must I do to have eternal life? And then the question, well, who is my neighbor? When Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. But the key to that story, I've always believed, is the question at the end of it. When Jesus asked, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Which of these was a neighbor? I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, do to others as you would have them do to you. Jesus' teaching today is actually not about our enemies. It really is not about enemies. It is about how we, we who listen, are to love others. It is all about how we are to be neighbors to those around us, and particularly our enemies, those who hate us. How are we to be neighbors to those who choose to be our enemies? 
Not that Jesus' concern here appears to be those who listen. I say to you that listen. His disciples, his followers, that's who he's speaking to. He's not speaking to the abusers or the violent or the thieves. He speaks to his followers. This is how we of the kingdom behave towards our enemies. This is how to be a neighbor to those around us. And Jesus follows that with concrete examples of how to do it. Pray. Do good. Bless. As you know, I'd like to look up the sort of the, the words, the see, you know, what, what's the Greek background to it? Bless here actually means to praise. What's the translation of that one? Because think of that. Praise your enemies. How many of us want to praise our enemies? Do not strike back, Jesus says. To be clear, Jesus does not excuse the evil behavior of others. Jesus does not excuse the behavior of our enemies and those who might attack us. But the invitation here is to listen and to hear what he has to say. And what he has to say is, if you follow me, then you are to choose to be a neighbor to those around you. However ill they treat us, we are to choose to be their neighbor, however much we disagree with them. So are we prepared to be a good neighbor? Are we prepared to love our enemies? To seek the best for them? To pray for them? How will we speak of Tammy and Stella Luna? Again, she and Alessandro have made a home here. How will we be with them? As war looms in the Ukraine, how will we pray? Are we praying now? Will we pray for peace? Will we pray for the Russian people? Will we pray for Putin? Jesus' teachings can be so hard. Put a little plug in. I'm going to be doing a Bible a book study of that over Lent. The hard teachings of Jesus. His teachings, especially the ones today, are so difficult. It seems imprudent to actually listen to him. Jesus at times is absolutely infuriating. Because what he teaches goes against everything that our society says we should do. And yet we claim to be his disciples. We accept Jesus as Savior, Lord, Master, Teacher, Friend. And so that raises always, every week, every time we read of Jesus, it raises the question, how, we, how will we respond to his teaching? How will you respond to Jesus' teaching today? How will we be a loving neighbor to those around us, to our community, and in the world? Amen. Stand. Let us pray. Forgiveness is never easy. Loving our enemies and those who hurt us is never easy. But Jesus usually does not ask us to do the easy thing. He asks us to do whatever brings about the most love. Let us offer our prayers to God, saying, Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for your church as it seeks to serve the world in the name of Christ, to share his good news with the nations, and to remind us that we are accountable to God for all we do. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, 
We pray for the parish of Miracle, Holy Trinity, and Christ Church Forest Rapids, and the Reverend Andrew Wilson and Jennifer. We pray for Michael, our bishop, for Robert and the parishes of Oxford and Kempton. We pray for the sharing table and its group of volunteers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray that your Holy Spirit may rest on all who bear responsibility for government among the nations. Make your presence known in the troubled areas of our world. Bring relief to those in need. We pray especially for the instability in Afghanistan, Iran, and Iraq. For the unrest in Hong Kong and Belarus. And the Tigray region of Ethiopia. In Myanmar. For the Rohingya. For the Uyghur in China. For the mounting tension in Ukraine. For our armed forces and for their families. For the victims of famine in East Africa and Yemen, and all those suffering from natural disasters. For all refugees seeking asylum. For those impacted by the unlawful protest in Ottawa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember especially the men and women who powerfully influence the life of our society those who fashion our politics, those who frame and administer our laws, those who mold public opinion through the press, radio, and television, those who write what many may read. May they recognize their responsibility to you, Lord, and to our nation, that people may be influenced for what is good, not evil, for what is true, not false, for the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we pray for our young people and for our students away at college or at university, for our sponsored children, Irene and Irma Fanon, and all children sponsored by our congregation, growing up in an unstable and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more meaning to life than the ways of the world. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and keep alive their joy in your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we trust to your love and care all whom we love, wherever they may be. For this congregation and for our hearing of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we now bring to you in our prayers those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. O Athea, Lucas, Joy, Tara, Anita, Steve, Angie, Cindy, Bishop Michael Hawking, John, Joan, Sarah, Rob, Tony, Linda, Susan, Betty, Bishop Michael Pollestone, Douglas, Ralph, Sarah, Derry, Little Erica, Margarita, Brian, Mike, and Imogen. And if there are others you wish to add, please do so now. For those affected by the coronavirus, for all our health workers, Remembering especially Jessica, Jane, Megan, Joanne, Emily, Dan, Trinda, Diego, Sally, Zach, and Ira. The first responders, and all those who are providing services to us in this difficult time. May your love and power be with them to release suffering and distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died and those who mourn. May the souls of all the departed rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you have promised that when two or three are gathered together in Jesus' name, 
we will grant their requests. We thank you that you are always more ready to listen than we are to pray. Hear the petitions of this assembly. Hear the prayers unspoken in our hearts. For we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our full heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Mighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our offertory hymn is I Come with Joy. pray together. Merciful God, accept all we offer you this day. Lead us to love you with all our heart and to love all people with your perfect love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hand in suffering to bring relief to those who placed their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory to your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Behold what you are, and we become what we receive.
60 stands. Let us pray together. Gracious God, in the Eucharist we celebrate your love for us and for all people. Grant that strengthened by these holy gifts, we may show your love in our lives and know its fulfillment in your presence. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power of working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father of the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. The closing hymn is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.